The word came down late yesterday afternoon that uh, Dylan Roof was sentenced to death. Jim Ryan is covering this story with ABC News. Good morning, Jim Ryan. Good morning, McGraw. I don't think there was a lot of surprise about uh, the, the sentence that came down. After all, Dylan Roof, acting as a, his own attorney during the punishment phase, did absolutely nothing to try to dissuade the jury from making the decision that it made. It's the same panel, of course, that had convicted him on uh, 33 federal counts, civil rights violations, religious rights violations, uh, uh, hate crimes, essentially. He does still face, Dylan Roof, uh, the uh, possibility, maybe the likelihood of state charges, murder charges being filed against him, and uh, and that trial going forward. It was supposed to start next week. It's been put off indefinitely now, McGraw. Yeah, uh, he, as you said, he he uh, served as his own attorney. And I keep hearing over and over again, it keeps being reported that he didn't show any remorse. Yeah, I mean, he just sort of stood there stoically as he did through this whole uh, trial. He's really shown very little emotion at all. And he, he may have summed it up best when he stood there in front of the jury yesterday uh, during his opportunity to make closing arguments. And, and all he really had to say was that, uh, I feel like I had to do it. It didn't elaborate, didn't give any explanation for that. I think we saw a lot of the explanation, though, in the video that came out of his uh, confession or his conversation, his interview uh, with the FBI after his arrest. He walked into a church in Charleston, South Carolina, and killed how many people? Nine people altogether. Twelve people were shot. Three of them did survive. Uh, we learned during a court testimony that uh, one of the, the victims there on the floor uh, was told by Dylan Roof, I want you to survive so that you can tell my story. He seems to want to do something. He wants to leave some sort of message behind. What that message is, just, uh, I mean, we've seen bits of it in, in this manifesto or this diary that was found in his jail cell. It, it all seems to boil down to his hatred for blacks. He was uh, sentenced to death. How long before he will actually see that punishment carried out? Likely that he'll never see it carried out, not at the federal level. It just doesn't happen very often. It, uh, you know, Federal death penalty cases uh, are very rare in the first place. Winning con conviction is even more rare than that. And, and actually having it carried out is, uh, is perhaps the most rare thing of all. Uh, you've got uh, you know, people sitting on federal death row, just a handful of them, and I think chances that they ever would be put to death are pretty slim. Yeah, interesting. Uh, Jim Ryan following the uh, Dylan Roof uh, story. Jim, thanks for checking in. Thanks, McGraw. 620, Big 550, KTRS. One of the most amazing things of that horrific story that happened uh, almost 19 months ago um, was that the church, the all-black church, held a prayer meeting days later and forgave Dylan Roof for what he did. And yeah. used, and right, and said, for the grace of God, we, we, we forgive him and, and let's try and repair our own lives. It's, it's got to be, you know, very difficult for them to, um, the family members, those loved right. ones, to right. continue to hear what happened. And then to hear the person who has admitted to doing it saying that he, he, right. he has no No remorse. No right, right, right. But the, the thing that is just, right, talk about, talk about the grace of God mm -hmm. is the people from that community and from that church have yes. said, we have forgiven him. Mm -hmm. Which is, I mean, think about that for a second. That is, talk about the power of God, the power of, of prayer, the power of religion. And that these people who were killed in a church basement uh, during prayer service, right, during a prayer group, um, were, to, were to then come together days later. It wasn't years later. It wasn't months later. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, days later and said, we forgive him because that's what we, that's what we believe in and that's what we teach. I mean, that, I don't know how someone that young can have so much hate. Well, clearly he's not. He's mentally unstable. Clearly he's got some mental issues. Mm. Six twenty-three here, Big Five Fifty KTR. Scott Carruthers will have the markets.